video coming up on acquired digital fibrocaratoma. An article I did with my good friend and colleague John Waller back in 2005 for a small online publication that we did and it was uh, tumours of the nail and distal digit and we mentioned them there and we get a few come through I've actually done two in the last month so acquired digital fibrokeratoma is a phrase and there's a much better article by she and Kachi Mooney talking about oh just getting a text sorry about that guys um, talking about the clinical and uh, dermoscopic features that's a really nice paper by these two uh, dermatologists they uh, and I would agree with them, they, they specifically say if you get it around the nail you might call it a periungual acquired fibrokeratoma. So there is some slight overlap of terminology. And obviously the ones I see tend to be around the nail, but you can get them pretty much anywhere on the fingers and toes really. I've seen them on the, the pulp and the apex of the digits. So as I said, I've had two come through in the last month, so I managed to video one. So this young lady came through with really quite a decent lesion and it was really causing a lot of dystrophy to the nail plate, was sore, was being a bit of a nuisance, was catching, was bleeding. Benign process, so of course we, we send them for histology because we do, but I'll I'll do a little video of the technique and another text coming through. Sorry guys, I've tried recording this about five times, so I'm just gonna let the text, <laughs> I'm just gonna leave them in. Welcome to my world. Okay, video coming up. Maria, I'm half talking to myself and half talking to the camera, but feel free to jump in if you're feeling lonely, okay? So we're going to do it under a little torn clay so there's no bleeding. Insulegia? Yeah. Insulegia down. So. No uh, sanguine? Confronti ventral blood? Sanguine blood? Uh -huh. No. So, the second most difficult part of the procedure is getting these things on. Okay. So, just check. Still in shot? Yeah. Camera in? Okay. Being right. Stitches are. Excuse the clattering, guys. That's me just prepping things. So let's get. So here is our trigger, all nice and white now. Yeah. So I'm going to come, going to come back here and come on top of the toe. That was a little delicate there, as in a little too delicate. When you do these, you're never quite sure how much nail trauma you've got. Because there are times when I've done these, I've actually done a, a Winograd type resection of nail as well. So there she blows. So let's see how far back this goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. So this is actually quite soft. Sometimes they're right over the top of the nail plate. And sometimes as this one, it's a bit more invested in. Maria's just moving the camera. What's the mess? What's the mess, Maria? Yeah. Well, yeah, it'd be a shame to miss it all. So this is an interesting one. So we're actually all the way through down to, really down to bone really, guys. So 
So no, coming back, so we're actually staying quite low on that. So there's our section there. Now I send that off to histology just because I can, Maria, just to send it off, just to check it's all clear. Yeah. Now then, so quite close to bone there. That looks a little suspicious there. So I'm just going to tickle it out a little bit there, guys. You can see the nail's taken a bit of a battering from the lesion. That looks to me like it might be a bit of base of that. And the rule of thumb, and you'll get this with any surgeon, is if in doubt, cut it out. That's what we do. We're simple creatures, but looked a little suspicious that. But that's all out and it looks kind of nice and clear. Okay. Tiny, tiny bit. I'm just going to just scrape bits there and then just give it a wee clear out and put a couple of stitches in it just to hold it and then just check any of those, those little bits that look a bit suspicious so maria that's it all out there now yeah. okay so i'm going to put a stitch in there the, that lesion has created quite a lesion so quite a hole on the nail and so we'll have to see how well that nail grows again with time. It might always be a bit traumatised. Yeah. But the main thing is for this, for this thing not to, to grow back. So there would have been an argument for this one, guys, doing a, a full Winograd and doing all the nail and the, and the nail root, because it will be a case of st stitch the, the right way, Riley, for God's sake. You know, there would have been an argument for, for being more aggressive and doing a full wine grad. Um, but with these, you never really know what you're going to get till you get in there. It's a bit like that box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. The main thing is to try and give that nail a chance and to get all of that di acquired digital fibro keratoma out. Sounds a bit fancy, doesn't it, that? So we're going to leave these stitches in about a week. I'm going to get this young lady in. Um, one week. One or seven, one That good? Yeah. Really. And I'm just going to see if I can just tack that bit in there, guys, to the underside of the nail, just so there's no uh, kind of dead space. So I've just gone through the nail there. stitch and doesn't need any kind of fancy dressing on that I'm just going to put a little dressing on hold the stitches in for about a week and then we'll do um, a three month follow up to see a how that nail is regrowing and b that all that little trigger is gone righty I terminate maybe looks for dressing which I've just put down See how that goes bleeding wise. So if the most difficult thing is putting these on, then the second most difficult thing is to taking them off. Okay. But at least it worked. And we'll see how much claret we get. Hopefully not too much guys. Not pretty much, okay. So we'll put a little Simple bandage on there, doesn't need anything too clever really. I want to say I'm going to get this lady back for stitches out in one week, but we need to chase up for three months and see how we go. All done. Well done you. Thank you for the video. Thank you.